The gentlewoman from Washington and opponent will each control five minutes. Thank you, Mr. Speaker. I yield myself such time as I may consume. The gentlewoman is recognized. The amendment that I'm offering today is all about good, responsible government practices. It ensures the federal resources, limited as they are, are directed to those areas that have the greatest need for construction funds. This last Febu February, we approved the stimulus package, $787 billion. More than $53 billion went to the State Fiscal Stabilization Fund, which funds states and localities to use the funds for any activity under ESEA, IDEA, the Carl Perkins Career and Technical Education Act, the Adult F and Family Literacy Act, or for modernization, renovation, or repair of public school facilities. I was one of a number of members concerned about the prospect of creating a nationalized school construction fund, particularly in light of reports indicating the lack of academic achievement made over the last decade by our middle and high school students. For example, the 2006 program for international assessments puts the United States 15-year-olds in the bottom quarter of participating OCED nations in math and in the bottom third in science. This is unacceptable. These reports demonstrate that there's more to be done to improve and strengthen the education that our students are receiving, especially as it relates to the nation's future competitiveness in the global market. I do not believe that a federalized school construction program, one with limited transparency and accountability, is the solution to the problem. Let me be clear. There's no doubt that certain schools are in dire need of renovation and repair. And we can assist them in making the necessary repairs in order to create safe and secure learning environments. However, once secure funds have been directed to one area for construction and repair, responsible governance tells us that any remaining funds should go to those areas that have not yet received the funding, but they do have a demonstrated need. My amendment accomplishes this by restricting areas that have already received construction funds through the stimulus package from receiving funds authorized by this bill for construction. H.R. 3221 already provides a limitation on construction funding for community colleges that have received the stimulus dollars. Should be no different for elementary and secondary schools, sending the much needed message that learning should be a priority, especially in the formative years of a child's education. I urge my colleagues to recognize the need for responsible, responsible governance by supporting this amendment. I yield back the balance of my time. The gentlewoman reserves her time. Do I purpose as a gentleman from California rise? I rise in opposition to the, to the amendment. I yield myself uh, uh, one minute. The gentleman is recognized. This is really sort of a, a redo of where we were with the previous amendment to strike the construction funds that would be available, in this case, the K through 12. Uh, the gentlewoman's amendment, as it's uh, as it's uh, drafted, would, would if they if they receive those funds uh, under under the Recovery Act, of which one of the allowable allowable costs originally we started out with the line I uh, with the line item for construction, it became an allowable cost. If they received any of those funds, they would be ineligible to receive these construction funds. The fact of the matter is the record is starting to develop that very few, if any, of the school districts were able to use those funds for construction because of the fact of the cuts that took place in almost every state across the country uh, where teachers, where those funds have been used to try to mitigate the firing of teachers, to, 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 uh, to, to continue to try to develop a reasonable, a reasonable class size and all of the other costs that were going as, as local school districts. We're, we're, we're really hard, very hard hit uh, in, this, in this economic uh, recovery from the downturn in local revenues and state revenues, and, and uh, uh, that's why this, this amendment is, uh, is necessary. I would hope that we, I mean, that, that the opposition to this amendment is important so that these school districts can receive these funds to build a clean, modern, uh, and energy efficient facilities. And I, uh, I yield uh, three minutes to the, uh, to the gentleman from Texas, Ms. Jackson Lee. General Williams recognized. I thank the distinguished chairman and I thank him very much for what is stellar leadership uh, and an overwhelming change in the way we think about education. I rise to oppose the underlying uh, amendment or the amendment present, uh, but support the underlying bill. Uh, this is um, a response to the competitiveness of the world. Each and every district that is represented here in this body, rural and urban, large and small, uh, clamors for more education, particularly 
secondary education, higher education. In my own district alone, as it relates to Pell Grants, 23,084 students will be impacted with as much as $110 million in new Pell dollars that will help uh, not only the nation's colleges, but in my instance, uh, the 18th Congressional District. I happen to have a district that has any number of colleges, both private and public, large and small, research and non-research, students coming from all economic backgrounds, and I can assure you the importance of Pell Grants is without comparison. And then I also represent an area that was hit by Hurricane Ike, one year to the date last week, still suffering from the lack of infrastructure, schools that have been destroyed, and the $359 million that will come in construction dollars to Texas, K-12, to is going to be a remarkable change for the people of Galveston or the people on the Gulf who were impacted by this devastating hurricane. In addition, I think it's important to note a full $87 billion in savings, competition in place. Anyone who wants to provide a student loan, private bank, state bank, can provide it. But we are providing for the hardworking, taxpaying families additional dollars and a fair, even playing field. That's something to celebrate. We're investing $3 billion to bolster college access and completion support, crucial issues. I happen to have a very large community college system. I'm gratified that language is in here specifically to enhance community college. Our community college system is growing with 60,000 students plus. This is the first step. Go to a community college, be you someone who is working, someone who is raising children, someone who is going back to school, a military person who is retired or who's just gotten out of the service, working with the GI Bill, now has an opportunity to be able to go to a college that has reinforced dollars. This is a bill that cuts at America's competitiveness. The world is getting smaller. People know science and math. Uh, they are looking to be inventive. And that means in order to create an economic engine for this country, we've got to educate our population. People are clamoring for education. As I indicated, all walks of life, retirees, people who are changing jobs, people who have been laid off and fired, this is a new step. So let me just say I want to applaud what we are doing here today, not because members are doing it, because we're changing lives. I ask my colleagues to support this legislation, and I yield back my time. The gentleman from California reserves his time. The gentlewoman from Washington is recognized. Uh, thank you, Mr. Speaker. This, this amendment is about responsibility and, and recognizing that we have limited dollars. We just, we just passed. $53 billion in the stimulus package that includes funding made available for school construction. There are a lot of priorities within our education system. I, too, am very concerned about, about competitiveness, about America's competitiveness, about our future, what's happening in our schools. And, and, and in Congress, we need to make sure that we're getting the resources where they are needed so that our kids can compete, so that our students can succeed. That's not happening. Our, our students are not competing effectively in the, in, the, in the world, in the global environment right now, in the global economy. And we're falling behind. I quoted the, the, the numbers for math and science. What this is doing is just saying that the money that will be made available will be made available to school districts that didn't, uh, didn't receive the money, school construction money, in the stimulus package. In my mind, it prevents double dipping. It will allow more of the schools that get more schools to possibly access the school construction dollars and it will protect other dollars to be used for other priority, uh, priority projects within our education system. And I yield back the balance of my time. 